The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It's familiar, but not too familiar, but not too familiar. Hi everybody! It's the it's the sick boys. It's all the sick. Well, it's two of the sick boys, and there's um, there's sick women also, sick women and children, and everyone's sick, and it's a nightmare. Now, um, to be fair, I I am not sick. Oh, how's that? Uh, well, I I well, let me take that back. I would say I'm not physically ill, but in many ways, mentally, spiritually. Yeah, your spirit. I've said that about you for a long time. Is that your spirit itself is sick? Like you're like reli- like religiously sick. Yeah, and, for for like seven. But Travis, I've got great news. Uh-huh. It's for right like here. seven nights in a row. BB has been up from like one to four thirty in the morning. Yeah, it's it, it's every, every this is. Thank you all for waiting on this episode. It's been the case for all of us for like. The better part of a week now, and it is tough to put together some laughs for you. But uh, here, here, here we are, and uh, we wanted to put out something this week, and so we have a live show for you. But little do you know, or maybe you do, depending on what I make the episode description. It's, it's actually two live shows in one. I have combined some of the best bits from our two back-to-back Chicago shows that we did last year into one super episode. And Trav, I don't know how much you remember about the Chicago shows, but there's some fucking jammers up in there oh i'm Uh, okay i'm excited to forget to listen to it people are finally gonna get to know why some of bim bam fans who were in attendance that night are constantly talking about seven parrots um because this is when that sort of comes to a head it's it's a fun episode um and we apologize for you know we like giving you a heads up that a live episode's coming out but obviously that wasn't possible this week um but yeah it's two live shows in one i cut like a ton of stuff out of both of them just to put together uh one one super episode so here's that and we'll talk to you when we get to the money zone Hello, everybody. Welcome to my brother, my brother, the show for the modern era i'm your oldest brother justin mcelroy please augustus save some for later <laughs> i'm your middle is brother travis mcelroy And I'm your sweet baby brother in 30 Under 30 Media Luminary, Griffin McElroy. We... We... Are dying. (laughs) Well, technically we all are for the moment. Have a fun show, everybody! Start dying. We... Eated the deep dish. We have tasted... We have tasted... Your tall pizza. We have, as have so many tourists, fallen into the pizza trap that you have lured for them. Oh, no, you ate the deep dish. Oh, no, you're not supposed to eat the deep this dish, sa- obviously. This, this savory cake you call deep pizza. You guys are probably tired of hearing about your pizza, but I'm tired of feeling your pizza <laughs> in me. We're having fun, but... Um, but um, I feel like I was hit by a garbage truck. And here's the thing. And it's delicious. It's a delicious it's garbage delicious. truck. It's delicious. It's delicious. But I feel like I was hit by a garbage truck and that some of it got into me. <laughs> and that's not a knock on that. It's a knock on our garbage body. We haven't yet had that Van Morrison like, well, Van party too hard. He's going to need someone to walk him off stage tonight. There's no more. Con- He's going to do four songs and go home. But we were like perilously close backstage Justin having a conversation. Justin was doing his, his taekwondo, getting all of us sort of psyched out of our minds. I was I was doing it in a room alone, and then people entered while I was doing taekwondo, and that seems to me like it should be treated like someone using the bathroom. It should be if I if you see the noises me, you made were sort of synonymous. It's called a key up, and it's a part of the formation. It's powerful. I don't want to forget that there's a key up with the that spear hand. So. Just part of the formation. Yeah, I, I agree. I'm not doing it right if I'm not doing the key ups. I guess 100%. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you all so much for coming. No, he's not going to do it now. It's not a performance. He right. just compared it to using the bathroom. Yeah, you but, pervert. But, yeah, you take a dump on stage. 
age. Um, We're saving that for Milwaukee. Yeah. Because they nasty. They nasty in Milwaukee. Um, what an honor it is to be here with you all tonight. I'm so excited. Yeah. Um, we might actually try tonight. Tonight, before we've always phoned it in for the 50 plus shows we've done before this, but tonight, we're bringing it. Uh, for your beautiful, wonderful city that has made us feel so well. You know what? Tonight, we horny for this one. Yeah. <laughs> God, we can say all we want, but I still feel like I'm going to die. Like, <laughs> we're trying to talk ourselves into not dying, but it's just not going to happen. If the burp police were here tonight <laughs> backstage, we would have been sent. I to actually life feel great. <laughs> great. Open up. It's the Fart BI. How do you all. Are you all just sort of. A custom, have your bodies become inoculated to the tall is pizza? Is that what it is? Uh, should we get going? Yeah, so uh, this is like, uh, it's a, an advice show, as you've certainly gleaned by this point. Kind of a do as we don't sort of situation. Um, don't eat at the pizza. Don't eat of your pizza. Unless you've got natural, I'm assuming you've developed some sort of digestive toxin. <laughs> Unless you've or developed. perhaps like a, a separate stomach chamber yeah. that allows you to like we didn't turn the pizza. Yeah. We didn't turn the tall pizza into cud the right yeah. way. Um, <laughs> uh, but uh, so we take your questions and turn them alchemy like into wisdom. That's the bit. <laughs> You know what? Let's all take a nap. Just a tight 20. Okay. I'm going to turn it around right now. Are you ready to turn it around with us through your energy and power? It's too much. Help, I'm too amped. Um, We don't normally do this, but you want to start with a Yahoo? I do want to start with a Yahoo. If you've never listened to our show before, we take questions and turn them alchemy-like into wisdom. And Griffin is going has extracted some questions from the Yahoo Answer Service. I, I have a team of people who extract it for me. I would never put on the suit required to go into the fucking upside down <laughs> and tangle with these fucking monsters. <laughs> uh, this one was sent in by the delivery man, Seth Carlson. Thank you, Seth. It's from Yahoo Answers user Kaylee who asks, "What would happen if I shoot a Ouija board?" <laughs> I've been playing with that thing, and now I want to get rid of it. What would happen if I shoot it multiple times with a real shotgun? First off, does this question answer not know of other ways to get rid of things? Yeah, it's just like, mm, that was a delicious Coke Zero. Pull! Bam! <laughs> I got oh, all my... would, you, would you do the Ouija board, like, or is it just sitting on the I think ground? if That's you think fun. it has a demonic presence inside of it, you, there's no, you don't want to risk it. Right. This ain't no game. I'm going to shoot this Ouija board on the ground. Thank you. I'm going to execute this Ouija board. This person thinks that the Ouija board would withstand multiple direct shotgun blasts. Yeah. Like, they think it is imbued with some sort of dark energy. No, or no, no. Or they've never fired a shotgun before, in which case this could also be very hilarious. Oh, yeah. One way or the other, film this. Yeah, please put it on video. We do. Because you might release a demon or you might like lift yourself off the ground to go flying back because you're six inches from a sidewalk firing a shotgun. It's gonna go bad. I I feel like Jumanji (laughs) 2. Not the one that's already coming out, but a new one that's really just an edit of the first one. Right. Where where one kid gets sucked into the game for 30 years, which is a huge bummer if you really... Yeah, think it's how's your kids' in, movie? It's bad. Uh, but then the, one of the other kids is like, well, fuck this. <laughs> yeah. It just blows it all Do you guys up. remember? Just or David, David Allen Greer, like a rhino rams his car, and he's like, I'm going to find that fucking game. Why didn't they just, like, shoot it? The first animal comes to, you shoot the board. You or, shoot. The, or the animal. <laughs> Everybody was very, like... Can't do that. They're endangered. Oh, because they're... There's not enough fantasy animals out there, and that's why we called you all here today. Hey, why didn't we use the Jumanji board to generate more endangered animals? <laughs> we could fix the whole thing. It's like, oh, we're almost out of tigers? No, we're not, Robin. Go ahead. Let oh, them out. There it is. Tigers, tigers everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Did you guys, do you guys smart. remember there was a, a cartoon version of Jumanji? No. Right, there's a cartoon series, and it was set not of the whimsical board game playing part 
but of... It wasn't whimsical, Travis. People died. But you know the part where little kid Robin Williams, and we're the picture like a 10-year-old in the jungle for by himself years. for yeah. 30 years as the world moves on without him and he becomes the animals he's afraid of? That's what the cartoon is. <laughs> oh, how fun. He's he learns a- to like bury his shit. So animals- <laughs> <laughs> My parents just died. That monkey just pooped. It's a cartoon. <laughs> I don't know how electronics work. <laughs> how fun. I, I just fought a wombat for the right to eat my own scat. Yeah. Like it's, it's Enjoy, brutal. kids. To be fair, they also made a cartoon out of Beetlejuice, where Beetlejuice sure. is like a lovable rascal. Uh, he was a lovable rascal. J- Robin, that movie's unbelievable. Jumanji, the only thing that is unbelievable about it that keeps it from the being only like a thing. The only thing. That when Robin Williams comes out, he just doesn't instantly snap that fucking board over his head. And flush name. it down yeah. the toilet. <laughs> flush it down the toilet. The first, like, there should be 10 minutes of that movie where Robin Williams is peeing on the Jumanji Yeah. Board. Fuck this. Fuck this. I recently bought a pair of designer Heelys. <laughs> Show over. End of question. I recently bought a pair of designer Heelys because a teen told me they were cool. Such a bad. That's such, such a, a bad, bad like, reason life to strategy. do anything. Yeah. Uh, how do I learn to Healy without anybody seeing me fall down or stumble, or otherwise make a fool of myself? I have a roommate, so practicing at home is out of the question. I'm assuming. <laughs> I'm assuming your roommate's a shut-in. That's fine. Uh, I also live in a big city. We know. We're here too. Remember, we're all going to be here in Chicago. It's pretty big. A lot of beautiful architecture, too. Oh, so lovely. The Art Deco. Lovely. Oh. I can't stop talking about it. These gothic touches. Ugh. I'm 37. <laughs> <laughs> so unless I'm practicing at 3 a.m. on weekdays, someone could see my shame. Also, it'd be dark, and I'd probably fall. Please help me out so that I can be my best, raddest self. That's from Hesitant Heelhead from Chicago. Are you here? <laughs> oh, hold on, hold on, hold, hold on. on. <laughs> Hold on. All right, I need complete silence. I want to ask again. Are you here? Okay. Okay, I heard a what? I heard a <laughs> what? So, yeah, okay, okay. thank yes, you. Yes, you are here. Excellent. Hey, when you led up to this, how uh, you don't have to answer this because I'm going to answer it myself because I saw the joke. And where please don't because you, you don't have a microphone and we do. When you're having this conversation with said teen... Did you lead off by going, hey, what's cool? <laughs> and the teen was like, designer Heelys. Designer and you're like, Heelys. got it. <laughs> like ran out the door. Designer Heelys. Is there a postscript on the email that's like, I'm going to, okay, I'm just going to try it. Uh, my kneecaps, my kneecaps, they're gone. <laughs> my legs are melting. <laughs> they're just gone. <laughs> my legs are coming off at the seams. Um, legs have seams. I've unraveled. <laughs> I've unraveled like a flesh mummy. Um, I firmly believe that I'm 37 years old. Now I mentioned um, Jesus. I know that's I, basically 40. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. Youngins, <laughs> yeah. Okay, all right. So anyway, where was I before I started? Oh, so are you starting to forget what you were talking about? Oh no. Oh. Before we decided to have a nice long ponder at my open grave. Um, I'm 37 years old now, and I've learned a lot in those 37 years. And one of the things that I have uh, that, that sort of become the, the most clear to me is that the, the, what matters in life is not the accumulation of wealth or stuff or prestige. Um, but the important thing and the thing that you can really do for the world is what can you give to the people that you encounter? How can your life be a service to them? Because in the end, that's the only thing that matters. So I guess what I'm saying is, (laughs) if I saw an adult fall the first time they ever used Heelys, it would be the greatest gift you could give me. Sort of personally in my day to day life, you would have to you would have to announce this is my first, this first, first time. time. Hey, everybody, gather around! And I've decided to try Heelys today. Today, now for and I'm you. Pretty, I'm pretty nervous about it. <laughs> I'm three days away from retirement. <laughs> yeah, right. 
if you would do that, that would be such a gift. What an amazing thing that would be, uh, sort of a, a facet in the jewel that is my life. One of the biggest facets would be that time I saw a grown adult try Heelys for the first time and beef it. And beef they, it so hard. Because the other option is that they say, like, I'm going to drive it for, and it's glorious. And you're just like, a butterfly. They've done it. They've finally become what they were always meant to be. I'm sorry, what? What's everyone yelling? You're wearing them. You're wearing them. Excuse me. He's wearing them. Uh, Excuse me. I'm going to need house lights. And I'm going to need you to come to center aisle now. Is, hold on. on, hold on, hold on. Serious come, question. Come on over here to the center aisle. Is this your first time? Because I'm actually kind of mixed on it. I'm mixed. Like, that's yeah. hysterical. But hey, also, how the show go? But, well, but well, also, I, someone dog. Are we die. insured? Is this? How does that even work? Listen, Paul, can you give me a thumbs up or thumbs down on encouraging an audience member to Healy? We got. Yeah, it's of, iffy. Okay, iffy. I'll take that. It, they're going to be fine, though. All right. D- whatever you do, don't Healy. Wink. wink. Don't say wink. They're okay, wink. Recording. Don't, don't, don't say wink. We'll just wink. Now, come down. No, no. One more aisle over, please. Center. Center stage. Cent- oh, you're going to go around. You haven't been drinking, have you? Because. Okay. Can you. All right. And I need everybody to be quiet. What's, okay. We're going to count Can down. you yell your name, please? Sam. 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 And what would you like on your doomstone? <laughs> Here we go. Wait, Sam, wait. <laughs> what are you putting on? Just in case. No, I'm just going to film. Oh, I thought you were going to put on some, some, some Healy music. No. Just going to put on okay. the theme song to Yuri on Ice as you All right. and glide effortlessly down the... All right. Okay, and I'm ready. Go ahead, Sam, Healy on down to us. Please be careful. Please be careful. All you're right. You're doing All it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he's dab, dab. We got to dab. Keep going. Okay, and we'll stop right here. We'll stop right here. We'll stop right here. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Sam, everybody. <laughs> yeah. And a, and a special thanks to the security guard who stopped Sam from healing too close to the stage. Sam, you now owe this man a life debt. And Okay, thank you, Sam. Thank that you, was Sam. excellent. You did so good. And now you're great at healing. We fixed one. Yay. Oh, how exciting. Uh, um, how about a Yahoo yeah, from the sure. answer service? This one was sent in by Level 9000. Yeah, Drew, Drew, Drew Davenport. Thank you, Drew. It's from an anonymous Yeah, Drew Answers user, but we'll call them Bill Amy. Bill Amy asks Cat won't come out of hiding after I got a vape pin? <laughs> So today we actually thought our cat ran away because we couldn't find him, and he does, doesn't usually hide like that. I also got a new vape yesterday, and I wonder if this was the problem. Help! <laughs> Jeremy, Jeremy, I'm not going to watch you do this to yourself. I, ca- I care too much about you, Jeremy, to be a part of this. Jeremy, the science is inconclusive. <laughs> I'll be under the couch. If you'll excuse me, I have to lick my asshole. <laughs> Um, Which is much like vaping, if you think about it. Um, Don't get me wrong. It looks radical. No, it looks so cool. Sick as shit. But I care about you, Jeremy. Do you think that the cat was like wondering, like, could you do that the whole time? And you're just now? Are are you a wizard? (laughs) Are you a a weather wizard? You're blowing... You make clouds? If I could blow cotton like that, I would be doing it 24 hours in cod. If cats could vape. Here we go. If cats could vape, you know they would be blowing cot in your face 24 hours a day, right? You would wake up in, like, fucking London fog. And it's like, what is this? Oh, that's right, my cat is fucking ripping some blueberry dream (laughs) right into my eyeballs. Garfield would be fucking lighting John. Uh, You wouldn't see (laughs) Nermal. There is probably not a Garfield strip that couldn't be accurately concluded with (laughs) Garfield just, uh, well, Garfield had a real rough day at the office. And Garfield thinks, tell me about it, John. And John's like, ask the girl on a date. She said no. Every 
every Garfield strip has just two, just picture two more frames, like appended on of those. That's frame four. <laughs> frame five. <laughs> oh, you're such a fucking idiot, John. <laughs> Jack Garfield would blow it right in John's face. Yeah, oh, definitely. It's just a big cloud around John. About around John. Please. And then the last strip is secondhand vape, like it's killed John. That we, yeah, it's science, inconclusive. We don't know the yet. The science but. is out on that one right now. Jim uh, Davis definitely vapes, so we can do they all make, okay. Do they make lasagna flavored vape? <laughs> oh, he would love oh, that. He would love it. He would love it. But you it. know when he wouldn't vape? Mondays. Are you kidding me? No, I me? think he would vape extra he would hard on Mondays. Vape Mondays. Vape double it's on the Mondays. only thing getting him through. Yeah. <laughs> Ripping that Monday cotton. Uh, how about uh, Yahoo? Yeah, please. I don't want to oversell it. It might be the best Yahoo of all time. <laughs> well, at least, at least you didn't oversell it. <laughs> it was sent in by Ben Schultz. Thank you, Ben. It's Yahoo Answers user Dean. <laughs> Who asked? Meh, meh. Really? Meh. No, it's great, but I can't do the voice because I don't want to do anything to Sully this beautiful... You could do your Sully impression. Perfect. <laughs> I'm a pilot. Well, yeah, what's the uh... <laughs> Finally, someone put that guy on blast. <laughs> oh, I saved a bunch of people. <laughs> but those, but those... What's his rep white with ducks? Probably not You ever great. think about that? Probably not good. He, no, he steered... A plane <laughs> into ducks. He's a monster. Anyway, yeah, be- fuck Sully. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Is he here tonight? Actually, I'm just uh, we're just having fun, sir. Thank you for your service. The best Yahoo of all time. Dean asks, if I legally bought the Mona Lisa, would anyone be able to stop me from eating it? <laughs> Once in a generation, a Yahoo comes along that I don't even know how to joke about because, I don't know. It's like Ben came down from a mountain and handed this to me on a tablet. So, could could, they? Could they? No, I mean, it's your painting. Yeah, Indiana Jones is not going to kick in the door to your apartment and be like, it belongs in a museum. It does look good. I it does it. look good. Belongs in a museum. It belongs in here. Indeed. <laughs> what Make, if that's how Last Crusade ended? It's like, you have chosen wisely. Thank you. Um, 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 um. <laughs> yeah, you look like Willy Wonka to take a bite out of it. Um, oh, no. Now, you could eat a little. Don't. Yeah. <laughs> this is an excellent point. Picture the Mona Lisa, right? Yeah. That bottom, not, inch, that bottom inch could go. It could go. You could eat the bottom inch. No also, one would know. It's not as big as you think it is. So, like, have a side. <laughs> there are big. Yeah, <laughs> there are bigger paintings you could eat. Okay. Nighthawks is a big one. You could eat a lot of you know, Nighthawks. Jackson Pollock has some. Um. So, uh, could you eat where? Okay, Travis. Uh huh. If you're gonna eat the Mona Lisa, would you start with the face? No background. <laughs> Let's start with the background. You oh, that, you, here's what you do. Oh, you, oh, oh, you photocopy okay, it. We got mics. You photocopy it. Okay. Then you eat the background. Then you just put it over the photocopy. Yeah, this is literally a Mr. Bean movie you've described. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> it would... <laughs> there, I can think of few power plays better than getting the Mona Lisa, making a perfect copy of the Mona Lisa, eating the original, and giving it back. <laughs> and so like, hi... I changed my mind, and I want you all to have it. <laughs> and then when you see people enjoying it in a museum, you're like, oh, yeah, it's the real one. <laughs> and, uh, and you just rub your tummy. <laughs> you rub your tummy. <laughs> Do you think that this person would start getting kicked out of the art auctions? Because they're just like, $100 million and one dollars. Mm, that's a knife and fork in there. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> They've got a napkin, and it's a part of the Mona Lisa. <laughs> they just... <laughs> Pour up a Monet to do a little... That is good because I don't know that anyone, like, when they've died, have been able to donate their body to a museum before. (laughs) I want to donate the Mona Lisa to you. It's in there. It's in there. Trust me. (laughs) 
even if you wanted to eat the Mona Lisa, I suspect that you would probably get about a third of the way through it for like, ugh. <laughs> Like, it's not going to be good, and you don't want to sully that experience with ketchup. Yeah. Right? You don't and what s- most people don't know, it's very deep. <laughs> a lot it's of a deep, deep and thick pain. Pain. Yeah, race, size, and everything. I read the best news story ever the other day, and uh, it was from some museum. They realized they had a Van Gogh piece from their, his, like, Olive Fields collection that he did. And what they discovered is that there was a, uh, a grasshopper in the paint. Kansas City, what's up? Represent at a Kansas City museum. There was a grasshopper just in the painting. And I love that so much because Van Gogh must have just been like... <laughs> <laughs> Got you! Got you, you bastard! Yeah. And he still, like, sold it or whatever. Just like, yeah, you're going to love it. Here it is. So it's so it. realistic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the stair- Here it is. Grasshopper free. <laughs> This painting's called. This painting's called something different. Oh, you not going with the same Olive Fields naming convention? No, this one's called Trapped Idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Got Take him. that fucker! It's called Take That Fucker. Yeah, yeah. Now, yeah. Griffin, it looks was, delicious. Was it called Olive Fields? Or are you just very carefully not calling it his Olive Garden? Period. <laughs> Yeah, that's not, not what I said was wrong. And thank you for bringing it up, Travis. You could do a tortilla. You could do a Mona Lisa with beef and cheese. <laughs> that's probably the most oh, okay. appealing way of eating it. And that's good because you could probably get a couple out of that. Don't eat the Mona Lisa by yourself. There's only one to eat. You should share it with everybody. If you could get, is Jackson, is Jackson Pollock still with us? Because if he is, you give that dude some fucking Subway squeeze bottles of nacho cheese and he's one a, guacamole. He's a sandwich artist. Yeah. Whoa, you could, eat, you could eat the Mona Lisa and a Jackson Pollock at the same time. Yes. <laughs> That's amazing. Now, I think the perfect crime. It, why wouldn't it be more valuable? That's just double if you art. Ate it? No, if oh. Jackson Pollock painted another painting over that painting, it's like double art at yeah. that point. Hey, I heard you like paintings. Yeah. I think if you're going to eat the Mona Lisa... And I am. Yeah. <laughs> We've established... You then have to claim it's stolen because they're never going to find it. In- and I guarantee it would take the world's greatest detective to suspect... <laughs> oh, I bet he ate <laughs> I thought you were going to say the world's greatest art restorer who would look at your... Look at your give me a couple days. Give me, well, this is it. My last job. I thought I was out. Give me that. I thought it was out. Let's do this. I think I see the nose. <laughs> I'm going in. It's in Boswell. Not for me. A patient pervert. <laughs> What if Dr. Alan Grant had been digging in that big pile of dinosaur poop in that in Jurassic Park and he'd just been like, reach? Oh, God. It's the Mona Lisa who fed the child. I'm sorry. Uh, here is another question that I have for you, my brothers, on the iPad. That same one that I use for Munch Squad. And you might think, does he have difficulty getting back to the original app with the questions list on it? And does he ever have to vamp to cover it? And the answer is no. <laughs> My fiance and I are... No, what? Okay. You sure? Yeah. Which one? No, do it, because you already started it. Well, no, I don't have... Okay. Hey, everybody. Give us a second. Give us a second. (laughs) My fiance and I are getting married on 420. Yeah! (laughs) The debate was whether or not Griffin had earned this question. I've been real good. Um, My fiance and I are getting married on 420. Yeah! (laughs) Yeah! <laughs> All right. The weed day. <laughs> my fiance. Yeah. My fiance and I are getting married on April 20th. But there's a problem. We don't partake in, it says here, magic cigarettes. <laughs> How can we embrace this dankest of days by inserting subtle nods to that dope herb? And help our guests ride high on the magic dragon. You've ruined 420. P.S. <laughs> it says, I had to look up most of these euphemisms. I never would have guessed. It was so organic. That's from Going Green for our wedding in Chicago. Are you here? Okay. All right. That's eight people. <laughs> okay. I just need one person to answer, and I need. You. I need them to say, I am here. 
Okay. Perfect. All right. Oh, that was a really good susical kind of moment. That yeah. was very nice. Uh, what I Theater? need, what I yeah. need you to do for me is to yell out another name for marijuana that you know. The first, shh, quiet. Go. Weed. Weed. Yeah, that actually. Works. You're a narc. Get out of here. Get this narc out of here. Okay, here's my question, and you don't have to answer because we'll make jokes about it one way or the other. Did you accidentally plan your wedding for 420? Or did, like, was it like, well, it's not weed, but maybe it is weed. And, like, you stole it from somebody else. Because that's the thing. There's probably somebody who was like, oh, I really want that venue for 420 because I love Love weed. Love weed. You're keeping that venue from someone that was going to go hard on a weed wedding. Yeah, it was going to be, like, weed-themed. I'm sorry. It's your anniversary? Nice. (laughs) This, are you sure this is not a very important day for you? Because that's the thing. You will have to spend, like, the rest of your lives together uh, married. Like, when people are like, when were you married? And you'll say 420. And even, like, the most you boring... Okay, no, 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 stop, stop. You won't say 420. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that yeah. would be a wild response yeah, that's to what is you married. But even the most boring government employee will be like... <laughs> and you'll have to say, like, No. I, I think that even if you do not partake and you shouldn't feel pressured to, one of is the... Is it legal here, by the way? We need to start finding that out before we go to... No. no. And then it's not okay. <laughs> Paul. Then I am against it. Paul, burn it. Paul, <laughs> Paul start flushing. Flush it. Flush Flush it. time, Paul. <laughs> Flush it. I know we had established that if I yelled at you toilet time from the stage, it meant one thing, but it means something different. <laughs> Like double on palm Even if you don't partake and you shouldn't feel pressured to, one of the there are two great things about your wedding, and one is that it's a special day you'll remember for the rest of your life, and it's a beautiful moment where two souls become one. <laughs> and there's cool tax stuff that happens. <laughs> but the best next thing is that you get to remember which of your friends got too fucked up at your wedding forever. <laughs> It's a wonderful I've got gift. it. I've got that list in my mind right now, and they know, and we know, and everybody knows. And I feel like at a 420 wedding, it's just like you're going to have a whole, a whole table of people who just disappear for a while in the corner and watch fucking Happy Gilmore Which, on one of their phones, and it's like, <laughs> yeah, having yeah. a good time, guys. <laughs> Which, if you think about it, is way better. Wouldn't you rather have that than like you got too drunk and you got in a fight? Like, I'd much rather have like, no, there was no leftover cake because of Bob. Right, that's a way better experience to have. Pro- yeah, it turned out we didn't have to take any leftovers home. Probably the best thing you can do is don't go hard on the weed stuff, but do tell the person officiating the wedding that you are going to go hard on the weed stuff. Because <laughs> I want them to have a lot of like, just like the buds emerge from the plant. <laughs> as, as the seeds combine to make one... It's, I've written here raunchy joint. I don't know if that... So shall your love be dank. Your love, too, should be dank. I hope... Yeah, so if the... If be fish, kind to one another. If you know what I mean. Be like we... Be, um, oh, is, that's good, too. You can put, like, BYOB and BYOW with, like, a question mark. I'm like, if they're cool, they'll know. Yeah, that's a really indecipherable code there, Dan Brown. I feel like you should, instead of the usual uh, entrance music, the, you know, the... Uh, fuck, nope, that's the graduation one. Uh-oh! Do you mean the wedding march? Yeah! <laughs> anyway... Uh, 420! <laughs> I feel like you should make your entrance music police sirens, but quiet. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. Okay, wait, continue on. <laughs> Your dessert table, brownies, but regular. (laughs) (laughs) But don't say that. Hey, how about a Yahoo? I love that, Griffin. Thank you so much. Uh, This one was sent in by Level 9000. Ya Drew Drew it. Drew Davenport. Thank you, Drew. It's an anonymous user, so I'm going to call him Ya Drew Answers user. Jerry, because there's an ad at the top of the screen with a guy named Jerry on it. Thank you. Not Jerry Seinfeld. The other one. Uh, Jerry asks... Stiller. (laughs) Jerry asks... Soldiers in the Troy horse. I have been wondering... It's called the thing. Like, it's not called the Troy horse. 
Yeah, the Trojan horse. <laughs> it has a name. Anyway. I have been wondering, what if the soldiers in the Troy horse needed the washroom? <laughs> this sounds like a pretty ridiculous question, but I am really curious about this. You could read that in a really kind of gross, like, I am. <laughs> <laughs> really curious about this. They were hiding inside of the wooden horse for a whole day. Did they pee and drink and eat inside? Love, Jerry Stiller. Is there, do you think like they all got in the horse and they're like, okay, so now we gotta be here. F- oh, man. Oh, oh no. no. Everybody used the bathroom before. Nobody used the bathroom before? I told, I said, uh, but I didn't okay. have to go then. Front left leg is the toilet. <laughs> That's the first thing we're deciding. Front left leg is where everybody goes to the toilet. We're putting the foosball table in the rear right leg. <laughs> so front left is the toilet. And then the Troy horse, which is now what I'm going to call it, rolls up. It was wood. You know it wasn't Ziploc fresh. Keep it no all way. Back. No way. Can we let this big, stinky ass horse This horse the- stinks like piss. And also I hear voices murmuring inside talking about like, oh no. Dylan used the front right leg. <laughs> that was the sandwich leg. That's the sandwich leg. Good going, Dylan. You butthole. Oh, no, they hear us. Stab, 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 stab. Could you make, speaking of buttholes, could you give the horse a butthole that's a working outhouse? It's a modern marvel. Says, I have a great horse for you. Check it out. It really poops. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Get that in here. Okay. Well, I mean, even without, even without the real shit tech, why did they see this big horse and were like, fuck yeah, I gotta have that big horse. So how often do you get the chance? It's like, listen, I know we have nowhere to put it, but how often do you see a giant horse? I know. If you got beat in that fight, you know, between the two people is between, if you got beat Probably in the, one of them, Troy. Probably some Troy. Like Troy or the Trojans or whatever, if you got beat by the dudes in the horse, you got beat by like a hundred guys that had been awake for 24 hours and shitting in a wooden horse's leg and marinating in their friend Jerry's farts. <laughs> and then they got out and beat you in a sword fight? If I was- <laughs> You were alerted to their presence by Creek. <gasps> yeah. Oh, God. And the fucking hatch on that open and just uh, like the a hundred of the. Most exhausted human yeah, being. Just like a hundred like, David Blaine post stunts should be like <laughs> barely dragging their way out. Do you? Th- Speaking of the Troy Hearse, do you think? Do you think the cat who made it got to a point where he was like, "I could make this better, but it's a trick. <laughs> <laughs> I could make this look more like a horse." But it's just... How good has it got to be before it's just a giant wood uh, horse? Yeah. Speaking of this, (laughs) building on this, if you had the people and the resources to do this, do you think that that guy maybe suggested, like, do you maybe want me to make you some weapons? (laughs) I I can just build you a ladder. I can build you a ladder. Just a big ladder. A staircase that you can You can shit wherever you like, and then at dark... You go up on a ladder. I could spend the next month making you wooden guns. Like, I'll what just, do you want? What do you want? Are you sure you want to do this? No, nah, no, nah, trust me. No, no, no. A horse. Did that, you a toilet horse? I need. <laughs> I need this. This is important to me. That is the thing that, like, the the Troy horse is always referenced as like amazing, like strategy. The people who let it in were just shitty at that. It yeah. wasn't a good plan. Yeah, that should be. That's because the. It was the first trap ever. It was the first ever trick. No one had ever tricked anybody before. Because, like, we didn't have the term Trojan horse. Yeah. yeah. So it's like... Oh, it's a big, good horse. They'd always wondered why it was called that. And then they were like, oh, okay, I get it. Because of this. Because of this with the trick. With the guys who smelled like farts. Trav, I want to tell you all about... Mo- oh, hey, welcome to Money Zone. Trav, I want to tell you about movement watches. Okay. It's MVMT, but it's pronounced movement because it's hip and it's now and it's fashionable. And it's they couldn't tw- afford uh, vowels. The vowels are expensive. It's 2018. In 2019, 
it's probably just going to be MVT. Mv- I, I always wanted to see that on Wheel of Fortune when they're like, can I buy a vowel? They're like, then just have a vowel. Letters are free. Come Letters on. are free. Bust up the big banks. This is the call to arms. Anyway, um, I have a movement watch. I actually have a couple of them, and they are so choice, so fashion forward. Love the way they look on my wrist. Um, they got a, a nice, big, sort of proud, noble face on them that I get a lot of compliments on every time I wear my movement watch. I, I love it. Um, and they start at just 95 bucks. And at a department store, you're looking at like 400 or 500 bucks to get a, a, a nice watch. But movement watches comes in so much under that. And by selling online, movement cuts out the middleman and retail markup, and it provides you with the best possible price. They got over 1 million watches sold in over 160 countries. That's 160 million. Wa- no, I don't know if that that's not what that means. Anyway, you can get 15% off today and get free shipping and with free returns by going to movement.com slash brother. My brain. Yeah, I wasn't going to say anything. That's MVMT.com slash brother. It hurts to um, make thoughts. But Uh the watch has a really clean design. It's seriously, I've I've been getting compliments on it, and this is the best time to step up your watch game. This is the best time to step up your watch game. And you know what time it is because of the watch you'll own. No, yeah, we got it. Yeah, okay. I also want to tell you all about the movement. MVMT.com slash brother and join the movement. Now to break up the big banks. Okay, so we've talked a lot about MeUndies in the past, and I realized Have something. We? Did we? Yes, it's okay. a new year. Listen, it's a new year, and a lot of people when they think New Year, they think New You, and they're like going through this laundry list of like I'm going to do this for myself this year. Let me tell you something. You might not think about it, but I can't even begin to tell you the importance of investing in some new underpinnings for yourself. Yeah, for you know what just, I mean. For, yeah, for your pizzone. Well, because you got to think about it like it's like the foundation of your whole look, your whole external presentation of your outfit. You know, it's good. It feels good to put on fresh underpants. Got to bag it up. Got to bag it up. And listen, MeUndies is three times softer than cotton because it comes from a sustainably Fuck sourced. Fuck cotton, though. Fuck it. Okay. Man, why? And with a subscription plan, you get new undies or socks delivered to your door. And it's easy to switch memberships, cancel. What or if skip I don't have? On. What if I don't have a door because I live on a big boat? Oh my goodness! It'll get delivered to your boat by underwear dolphins. Duh! Come yeah, on, I'm Griffin, read idiot. a book. What a butthole! So right now, Meundies has an exclusive offer just for our listeners until January twentieth. You get twenty percent off your membership and free shipping. That's twenty percent off an already discounted membership. And Meundies is so sure you will love their underpants. They will even offer a 100% satisfaction guarantee. If you don't love your first pair, get a 100% refund. So become a member today and start enjoying all the perks of having a MeUndies membership and start wearing great underwear. So go to MeUndies.com slash my brother. That's MeUndies.com slash my brother and bag it up. Good luck finding my boat, dolphins. Okay. It's a, it's a stealth boat. I want to tell you one more. Uh, I want to tell you about Bull and Branch. Listen, ho- well, they, they've said here the copy, you'll go to bed 365 times a year. That is probably statistically true, but I know I got some uh, fellow insomniacs out there who that might not be inherently true. Yeah, or party animals like me. Okay. You will go to bed at least once this year. And when you do, you I sleep to- for 41 days. <laughs> you will get ready for the rest of the partying. You deserve to have your best night's sleep every night that you sleep on a brand new set of Bull and Branch sheets dedicated to making the most comfortable sheets in the world. And I can vouch for that. Um, we have a couple sets of Bull and Branch sheets now. And I got their uh, Bull and Branch uh, bath sheets. There's like a bath towel, but much larger and able yeah, to like that. wrap around That's my entire body. It's so great. It's real nice. Did you know three U.S. presidents are sleeping better than ever on Bull and Branch? And I hope it's the good ones. I assume so, it's the good ones, the try, alternate reality ones. Try them yourself, risk free. Wow, getting political on this one episode. Then try them yourself, risk free for a month. Right now, you can get twenty bucks. Fifty. Holy shit, that's even better. Fifty dollars. <laughs> wow, Trav. Fifty dollars off plus free shipping at bowlandbranch.com. Promo code my brother. Bowlandbranch.com spelled B O L L and branch.com. Promo code my brother. Got a couple jumbotrons here. This one is for Katie and Dave, and it's from Rodney, who says, Hold on. I gotta zoom in the font. It's, um, again, just the eyes. The eyes are 
sick also. Hi, Katie. Happy birthday. Maybe. Thank you for putting these three dorks into my life. Thanks so much for being a good, good friend for these like five or six years. I can't wait for the message you send after you hear this. And thank you, Dave, for bringing the three of us together. Thanks, Trash Can. I love y'all. And since there is room, Teenage Mutant Ninja... No, read it. Tootin' Mean Age Needle Teetles. And that's what it says. That's not I like my, that. That's not my brain doing a bad job of it. But, um, yeah, I mean, nothing else to say about that one except Tootin' Mean Age Needle Teetles. Tootin' Meedle Ninja Tweedles. <laughs> tootin' Paddle. Um, this next one is for Jamie and Brandon. It's from Tommy. Jamie... If you hear this, you are morally, if not legally, legally obligated to watch the Entourage movie. Oh, oh no. Christ. I'm so... Listen, I mean, Jamie, it's, that checks out legally law. It yeah, it's true. Uh, Jamie, I'm sorry about that, but watch it, understanding that the Entourage movie is unstuck in time. Yeah. Um, you can read all about it on the internet. Uh, Brandon, play this for Jamie and record his reaction, and I'll give you back your copy of Gex. Damn. <laughs> You're awesome both situation. great friends, but these are my terms. <laughs> <laughs> forgive the good brothers for they know not the hell they have wrought I am mad with power and growing stronger alright okay cool good use of Jumbotron sort of a demon maybe, maybe okay a, some sort of demon with a captive gex situation um, before we hop back into the episode uh, I wanted to plug just a couple things one and this can is can I lie down yeah, this is super timely, because you only have a couple days on this one, but me and Teresa are going to be at San Francisco Sketch Fest Sunday the 14th, uh, doing a Schmanners at 1 p.m. Pacific time, and you can still get tickets to that. Go to sfsketchfest.com. Uh, I will also be doing the Worst First pay or Worst First Chapter show and the uh, Fake TED Talk show Friday and Saturday night. So you can come see those as well. Uh, but go get those tickets at sfsketchfest.com. Also going to be doing the Joko Cruise, uh, which you can find out all the information about that at jococruise.com. Uh, I just did an episode of Good Christian Fun. You did a great we- job on that. Thank you. It was super wonderful. I'm I'm now listening to every episode. Uh, I'm a big fan, and everybody should check it out. Uh, I also did just did uh, a video with Gabby Dunn on Gabby's YouTube channel. I also just did an episode of uh, Can I Pet Your Dog that just came out, and I think coming out later this week is an episode of Bunker Buddies. I was very busy this week. Yeah, so. I'll say. Um, all right, that's it. Here, enjoy the rest of the episode. Thanks, Max Fun, for having us on the network, and thank you, John Roderick and the Long Winters. Which I think we do in the episode, but I still really mean it. But can I... Can, that's it. Yes, you can go back to bed now. I love you. I love you too. I was talking to Justin. Oh, okay. He's he's here with me in the room. <laughs> Good joke, Justin. Ooh, stinky fart. <laughs> I like you did one. Bye. Bye. Max FunCon tickets are on sale now at maxfuncon.com. Watch stand-up comedy on a mountain. Roll out of bed after a dance party to see a live podcast taping. Take classes from amazing teachers with the most supportive group of people you'll ever meet. Make a bunch of friends and eat a ton of s'mores. Come to Max Fun Con at Lake Arrowhead, California, the second weekend of June, for friendship, comedy, and creativity. Get your ticket now at MaxFunCon.com. What's your your name and question? Uh, My name is Brad. Hi, Brad. Brad! Let's do it. <laughs> so uh, I, I work with... Okay, so it was a Borat impression, and that's not your regular voice. I, so when I said Brad, it was like, he's doing a Borat impression, but then I was like, what if that's his regular voice? And I kind of bailed. But now that I know it's a Borat impression... Go on. Go on, Brad. Sorry. So I work with high school kids. Okay. Um, marching band. So you know they freaks. Okay. <laughs> yeah, they're nasty. <laughs> So the biggest problem I have with them is uh, they have this tendency that they just, they just don't stop dabbing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Wait, is that real, p- Brad? Brad? No, 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 Brad. no, 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 no. It's real. It's real. It's real. Also, it's not. It's not really a problem. But go ahead. No, it, it, it is. It's just constant dabbing uh, while and, they're trying to play and, instruments. And they, and they disrupt the rehearsal, and they they want uh, the instructors to dab. They they caught me dabbing. I'm sorry to say. I just need to know. What can I give them instead of dabbing, or how do I make the dabbing stop? 
what can I give them other than dabbing is like, how do I introduce the next thing? Well, and maybe it's working really hard to be good at instruments. <laughs> We tried that, so they're, they're sort of into that, you know. That's good. I, I, tried, I tried the, the knee dab, which is this. That's not better. It's very, I enjoyed it. But, it's, but I think what Travis said, there's some heat there, where it's like, hey, everybody, I'm Griffin. This is my new viral video, and all the teens are going to get really into it. This is the new thing. It's called practicing your scales. <laughs> Have you ever thought about, and listen, Brad, I instantly respect you and what you do. Except for the Borat impression. No, and you did the dad. And you did. Have you ever thought about, like, looking around the room and asking them, like, how many of you are going to do this after this? And, like, those people you encourage to rehearse and practice or whatever, and the other ones you're just like, dab away. (laughs) (laughs) Just like in Mr. Holland's opus. (laughs) That would be way more... I, I played the trombone in middle school, and all I did was just, like hum through the drum bone. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> Never actually learned to play the drum bone and just convinced my parents, like, just sign this. I'm not going to practice. And they were like, we don't want you to fail. <laughs> you hear that, Dad? <laughs> take, take that, Dad. You're on blast, Clint. Um, oh, man. Do you probably, have any, there's like, prob- ringers? There's probably some instruments that have long enough rests in the sheet music where they could get some good dabs in there. And if that's the case... Gong. The gong, yeah. Gong is the one. It is right at the end. <laughs> Super dab. Because if that's, if that's the thing, I see a way for you to really stand out during the competition. Yes. <laughs> Does that help? It helps. Thank, Thank you, Brad. You, Brad. Okay, so I know you guys are from the great state of West Virginia. Hell yeah. 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 <laughs> so you're probably... You know, Abraham Lincoln made West Virginia a state. <laughs> so you're, you're probably pretty familiar with the urban legend of the Mothman? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I think some people know where this is going. So over the past couple of months, Chicago has been having this thing where people have been reporting sightings of a, a seven-foot-tall winged creature with red eyes. Fucking followed us here. That fucking Mark, man, are you here? He wanted, to, he wanted to go to the Jimmy Buffett show with you guys. Paul, Paul I'm going to need another drink. The Mothman's in Illinois. <laughs> that was extremely fast. Paul heard Mothman. I was like, oh, they're going to need this. Uh, what's... So it's, it's even been on, like, the cover of the Chicago Reader, and there's a lady who came and confessed that she summoned it for the roof. <laughs> That's not um, how Mothman works. Not. So, so my question to you is, um, do you think that maybe it is? And if so, what should we do as a city? Stay off bridges. <laughs> yeah, can't go on the bridge. That's ghoulish. That's what, that, what that dude, it's that dude's whole line of business. He's a bridge warner. <laughs> that is true. Hold I on, wait. I think we're going to go with the Mothman one this time. Um, uh, but thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Somebody did ask me, that I, I can't remember who I was having the conversation with, and they're like, hey, so we were talking about like cryptozoology and like local legends, and they're like, and hey, what's the Mothman's deal? And I'm like, well, some people saw him, and then a bridge collapsed. It goes, and then they made a movie. <laughs> it goes way deeper. So has, has Henry Cole been spotted anywhere? Oh, no. yeah. No? No. Okay. So we're probably okay from a safety perspective, because if Cole's not chasing the mo- you know Cole? Cole's the was the one who who arrived before the Mothman. Wait, there was a pre-Moth. If you don't know, the Mothman rolls up and he's like, "Oh, the bridge, the bridge," and the bridge collapses. That's the Mothman's whole deal. He doesn't fly around or shoot spores all over. There's but a to deep- have a pre-Mothman, it's like, "Uh oh, the no, Mothman's gonna but, come." But a guy Listen named Henry Cole showed yeah. up before, like hunting the Mothman. So he was like, so the Mothman's like an intergalactic convict. Who's escaped from space? This is death. real. This, this is not. This is. Well, I mean, still, it's not I, like. Hold on, hold on. It's not real. <laughs> <laughs> just so we like, don't get it twisted. It's not like real. Just uh, West Virginia has like one crypto dude. Can we just keep him? Just the yeah, one. And I, he's not even that good. He doesn't shoot spores out of his wings to put Pokemon to sleep or whatever. Like all he does is warns you about faulty infrastructure. And oh, I, there's a. 
pothole, it's going to fuck up your Jetta. No Thanks, Mothman. Can we get the Chupacabra in here to at least, like, kill a goat or something? You know, like, 50 people died, right? It wasn't like a pothole. It was like a whole bridge collapse. But it was also, a tragedy. He, so he did that one. He's like, I'm done. He didn't even do it. He didn't even do That's it. True. He was just walking back going, I don't know about that bridge. No, okay. If you're saying that the Mothman should have conducted a, a more thorough, effective advertising campaign about the dangers of the Silver Bridge, I, yes, I, I agree. Yes. The Mothman was not very effective as a the harbinger. City Hall recognizes the giant Mothman. Oh. Thank you so much. Thank I was you. just walking by that bridge. It does not look safe. Uh, actually, let me back up, because Dale Carnegie says I should use praise first. Debbie, the Harvest Festival this year was fucking kick-ass. <laughs> Anyway, uh, I, I want to put my engineering degree to good use. <laughs> Finally. Um, Kit, please don't steal our Mothman. It might be another Mothman. Could. There's, there's one not. in Iowa. There's That's what I'm not. saying. There's not. It's <laughs> like we need to. <laughs> I don't. Like, fucking Art Bell is not going to walk out on stage and be like, it's true, there are. <laughs> um, there's not. <laughs> but do you, think, do you think West Virginia Mothman, like, sees in, like, he gets the Chicago paper and he opens and he's like, that's not me. <laughs> this, is, this is the problem, though. We're all playing Calvin Ball with cryptozoology. If you start saying that the Mothman's in Illinois, he will be because, you know. So, like, let's just... Uh, because he's created by thought. You are absolutely correct, Justin. And believe the Mothman in him. a manifestation. It's actually short for Moth Manifestation. <laughs> As Neil Gaiman dictates in his book, American Gods, Kit, please don't steal our man moth. Thank no, you. Man Moth is a different one. Okay, you man can have Man Moth. <laughs> All right, so um, about a year ago, uh, my family got a, a parrot from a pet store. Mm-hmm. And it was like really fun because like, it's like a cool pet that I can like, show my friends. Like, we have a parrot. Um, As opposed to a shitty dog. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Uh, no, um, I get it. I've seen dogs. <laughs> Anyways, uh, boys, now we have seven parrots, and I don't know what to oh do. Wait, what? <laughs> Hold on. All right, all right, save it. Um, oh, okay. good luck. I'm afraid to ask my question. No, now. you go ahead and hit us with this. Maybe you have eight parrots. Go on. <laughs> we don't know. What's your name? Uh, my name is Benny. Hi, like, Benny. I am the Jets. Okay, Fantastic. cool. Fantastic. <laughs> And my question is, I have been living with my partner for about a month now, and we have kind of a problem in that he will show me media, like I've watched Death Note and Breaking Bad and a bunch of other anime. anime. or live action? Uh, the anime. The okay. anime. Okay. Uh, you. I don't know. Is that good or bad? <laughs> Stop talking, Travis. Subs or dubs, go. <laughs> okay, so, all right. <laughs> Says the media. The problem is, is that he won't watch anything that I like. Like, I tried to get him to listen to a few podcasts. You might have heard of them, like The Adventure Zone and My Brother, My Brother and Me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he just won't do it. How do I fix him? Okay. I actually, okay. can we answer both Play this. <laughs> Play this clip of 3,000 people doing. Um, um, I, I kind of want to answer both. I mean, that's against the spirit of the thing. I okay, just... can I answer this one real quick? Yeah. Okay, Benny, here's the thing. Yes, sir. You have to pick the right time to play a podcast for someone because it's not just sitting around in your house because there's a bunch of other better shit to do. <laughs> that's it true. Has to be in a car. That's the only time they... you can trick someone into listening to a podcast. <laughs> when it, and they should, the tagline for podcast should be, podcast, when your hands are busy doing other things. <laughs> right. Because there's literally... Or your eyes. Your too. eyes are busy eyes, doing other hands. things. Yeah. Your ears are free. Podcast? Podcast. Like, that's it. Podcast. It's six hours to Phoenix, motherfucker. <laughs> this thing's happening. Right. Because that's the thing. I, w- I love podcasting. I would rather play video games, watch TV, read a book. Anything is better than <laughs> nah, podcasts. Sure. Anything. Um, we but, are the mustard condiment that you put on the meat of the good thing you're actually <laughs> excited yeah. about doing. Uh, th- th- does that... So is maybe that's... watch our watch our TV show. Yeah, the new show is a good end. VRV.co. VRV. All six episodes streaming live. He Thank actually you. really does like your TV show. Fuck yeah, he right, does. Exactly. That's a good egg. Thank, Thank you, you, Benny. Thank, Thank you, you Benny. so much. Thank you, brothers. Seven of course. Parents. How did you get to seven? And you said it like, I got one and then I sneezed and there were seven. You had to have gotten to six and be like... This is fucking ridiculous! Can I ask you, I want to ask you a serious question, and I promise we'll let you answer. Yeah, no, go ahead. What was it about having six parrots (laughs) that you were like, this is good, (laughs) 
but there's a hole in our hearts for something else. It, there's just, it's missing. We're missing something, and it's. I think it's another parent. How after six parents do you not think turtle? Maybe like maybe that's what we don't. Okay, are so you trying to start a parent acapella group, and you needed a, a deep parent? I, I, I really wish we were, but all of them are completely untalented. Um, awesome. Cool. Was that what you were trying to do? Was each parent, maybe this one will be cool? Please, no, okay. please don't use our um, podcast as a bludgeon to lay waste to your parents. Um, hey, shout out to you, Mom. Uh, Thanks, Mom. She's catching up. So. Your parents say Mom? <laughs> are you okay? Tell me what the sort of sonic experience of crossing the threshold of the house is like. Um... How well can you imagine about 12 hours of screaming every day? (laughs) Pretty well, I have a baby. (laughs) The conversion rate is one baby to seven parents. Yeah, it's about that. That's, are, um, uh, do the parents all hang out in the same room, or is it like this okay. parents in the living room? This parent, uh, like. Okay, so we have our living room is there's like a wall of cages, right? Okay. Now see. And how many of those are parents, and how many are humans? <laughs> okay, we have this fun little thing where. Uh, that should have been an easy answer. <laughs> You shouldn't need a fucking, like, hold on. I want to answer your question about human cages, but I'm going to need to, to cushion this a little bit. Okay, I can't just come out and say I have three humans in cages. I, let, me, let me preface. It's kind of a 50-50 deal. Don't now wait. I'm not sure. You can't lie to, you can't, okay, you can't lie to us right now because you just said you have seven parrots. <laughs> So you don't want us to start questioning everything. Okay. So, Especially that so half a person. Why did you... I'm just going to ask you a question, and I want you to answer me. And I'm oh. tired of the lies. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tired of the runaround, okay? Uh-huh. Why did you buy a seventh parrot? Okay, all right. We did not buy each parrot so you separately. steal parrots from people. <laughs> That's disgusting. Wait, do you wake in the morning and a new parrot is there? No. Okay. I mean, that does happen I mean, so far. But not that quick a turnaround. I, so. I, right, I promise, we'll let you finish this time. Why did you buy a seventh parrot? Um, it all started when... <laughs> no, I'm locked yeah. in. Go ahead. Hey, you got me. It was a dark and stormy <laughs> night. <laughs> Fucking, can we just do in media res and you're kind of like about to buy the parrot? Yeah. <laughs> so you can help... We got two parrots as the final sixth and seventh parrot. Stop it. Parrot. Okay, <laughs> let me rephrase my question. Why did you buy a sixth and seventh parrot? You know what? I'll track it back. Second? Second. No, fifth and seventh. Your sixth and seventh parrot. What, what made you sort of... Was it you needed one for Saturday and Sunday? <laughs> well, well, and this is... I, I shit you not, this is completely honest... One of the parrots, parrot number four. <laughs> That's what you call them, too. That's what you put on their prisoner I mean, ID badges. <laughs> parrot four? You didn't finish your gruel, parrot four. Are, are vittles not up to your demanding standards? Perhaps parrot six would enjoy the rest of your gruel. While parrot seven looks at his parrot Hayworth poster. <laughs> Okay, so, Parrot... Sorry, your gag was Parrot Hayworth. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. It's like oh. Shawshank Parrot Redemption. I got you. Shit. <laughs> so. Just picture Shawshank Redemption, but with parrots. Okay. This is gonna... We've had a lot of fun here. It's just gonna be like, Parrot 4 died. And we just had like five minutes. Of- <laughs> okay, so you're... Why, did, why do you have so many parrots? Get Please, uh, justify Something it. happened to Parrot 4. Uh, parrot 4 was lonely, so... <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Fuck you, Parrot 4! They don't get along! The parrots hate each other. They have like it's like it's like Game of Thrones. They have different houses. <laughs> Thank you for Pikachu being. Pikachu fights the others, and she's smaller and weaker than the rest. Put them in a different your part par- your par- of Pikachu. the house. Stop, Charles. Charles, stop. Is your parrot named Pikachu? Wait, is, what? Is your parrot named Pikachu? Yeah, you want me to go through the names? Sorry. Yeah, I want yes. to listen to the fucking names. Yeah, list your parrots. Hey, names. goodbye, everyone else's questions. <laughs> so, okay, list the names of all your parrots. All right. If we, you can remember them. Yeah, right. We have Celeste. Awesome. We have Buckberry. We have P. 
Pikachu. Fantastic. We have, <laughs> we have Sadie. We have Taco, spelled T-A-A-K-O, named after the wizard. My mom's a fan Thank of the you. show. Hell yeah. Um, and then we have Pepper, and am I missing one? Wait. Yeah. Yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. You know how I know? You oh, have Rexy. seven parents. Rexy. We have Rexy, short for Tyrannosaurus Rex. All right. Okay. Was that the seventh? No, that was number uh, five. Jesus, we are in the weeds. <laughs> Can I ask you, I want to ask you two questions. Yes. And I'm going to ask them in succession, and then you can answer them in succession. Mm-hmm. First question is, what's the worst part about living with seven parents? <laughs> the second question is, what's the second worst thing about living with seven parents? Um, Wait, can I add a third question? Of course. Third question. Is there any improvement that you thought, oh, thank God we have that seventh one? <laughs> yeah. Did you have, like, a, a home invaders <laughs> and, like, six weren't enough to bring them down? The seventh one s- swept in and bit off their dicks. <laughs> okay, tell me the worst thing about living with seven parrots. And then tell me the best thing about living with seven parrots. <laughs> okay, so we have one, two, three, and four we need answered. Okay, so what's the worst? Worst thing is that parrots absolutely cannot be potty trained. No, the yeah. parrots, yes. It's a huge. It's yeah. Huge. That's huge. What's the second? Um, the second worst thing is probably that one of them's a sociopath. Oh. <laughs> but you, no, wait, but, hold but on. But you can never remember which one. <laughs> so it's like, no, it's, they ask you to join them in a room alone, and you're like, wait a minute, are you the one who, oh, well. But it is really good at solving bird crime. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it's parrot number four, the lonely one. Oh, that fucking parrot four. <laughs> What's the name of Parrot Four? Do you remember? Yeah, Sadie. Sadie. Fuck Sadie. Sadie. <laughs> no, Sadie's great. What's the best thing? I about- hope they get avian flu. Jesus. Stop Travis. Travis. Come on, Travis. Oh, and then they all turned against me. <laughs> yeah. I'll drink some more of my lord. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, to put a nice button on this, to give it just sort of a nice, a nice ending, because we've just been dunking on your seven small <laughs> birds of paradise for a bit. <laughs> What's the best thing about living with seven birds? Thank you, Griffin. What's the best thing about the seven birds? You can't just say thank you, Griffin. I need the best. There's <laughs> not no. a best thing. We'll There's edit it in later. Um, the best thing about having seven birds would probably be the look on all of our friends and loved ones' faces of concern and shock and horror as they <laughs> enter our house. Yeah. <laughs> Do you ever just? That's that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for all your parrots. Did you think you were going to be up here for 15 minutes? By the way, probably not. I hope you wore comfortable shoes. Um, Let's. That's going to do yeah. it for us. Thank you so much, Chicago, for for listening to us. We hope you had fun. Thank you to everybody. Let's have a big round of applause for everybody that was brave enough to stand up and ask a question because it's yes. very scary. So thank you to everybody. Do you see that? So what? Well, the P's upside the down. P's, 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 P's upside down. There we go. No, no, they, now you. your U is... I'm not going to troubleshoot you. Oh, it says, <laughs> on one side it says juice, and on the other side it, it says... says it probably says Justin, because like in the TV show. All right. Remember? Um, anyway. Now it says Justin. Now it says Jorps. Now it says... Now, it says, now keep going. Okay, now it says Josta. Uh, thank you to everybody for uh, coming out. Thank you. Can we turn uh, the house lights down? Because people are starting to leave to get their cars early. It's freaking it's me, out. me out. It's bumming me out. I don't want to say... It's, bye, everybody. Like, no hard feelings. I do it all the time. But yeah, I just I don't want to... I can't see it. Wait, get a poster on your way out. Yeah, sneakers. make sure to buy a poster of sneakers. We got you. We, you're busted. So now... Buy a fucking to, poster. So that's... Uh, thank you uh, so much to the Chicago Theater, which is beautiful, and I hope you are all frequenting this venue as much as humanly possible because it's fucking gorgeous. It's really amazing, and uh, thank you to Chicago in general. Yeah, yeah you're Chicago. a little bit amazing. Thank you to uh, Schmanners for opening for us; yep. they were fantastic. Uh, thank you to our daddy for doing our intro and coming with us and helping us out. Thank you to Paul for coming around and, and helping us out Paul, with everything. Check uh, out the music of Paul and Storm, available uh, everywhere. everywhere. Books are sold. Everywhere. It's uh, everywhere. You, you can't trip without finding Paul and Storm. Oh, and go on the Joko Cruise. Also, yeah. JokoCruise.com. Uh, Travis is going to be on it. Yeah, go there. my wife and I are going to be doing Schmanners. Our dad will be there. We're going to probably do some D&D. Not Adventure Zone, but D&D stuff. Yeah. Uh, thank you to John Roderick and The Long Winters for the use of our theme song. It's a departure off the album Putting the Days to Bed. Yes. Uh, I, I also just want to say like a general thank you to like our wives and families yeah. and babies and stuff for being so cool. Yeah. 
Um, thank you to CAA. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for them. For um, we're not going to be because of the aforementioned babies. They got to get to bed, so we're not going to be hanging out afterwards and stuff. But th- we so appreciate you all coming and and being so kind to us because really having this many people here to see our dumb podcast really means the world. Yeah. Yeah. And it, and I, I used to live in Chicago and I've seen shows here and the fact that we're up here right now is never not going to be completely surreal. And you're so kind. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Thank you so much. Um, so every week I'm a Bim Bam, if you never listen, Griffin reads the last Yahoo, and then on the next episode we come back and sort of discuss it. This one was uh, sent in by the delivery man, Seth Carlson. Thank you, Seth. It's Yahoo Answers user Caleb who asks, Has there ever been a person to get shoot in the balls and survive? Ouch! My name is Justin McElroy. I'm Travis McElroy. I'm Griffin McElroy. This has been my brother, my brother, me. Kiss your dad square on the lips. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported. I'm Riley Smurl. I'm Sydney McElroy. And I'm Taylor Smurl. And together we host a podcast called Still Buffering, where we answer questions like Why should I not fall asleep first at a slumber party? How do I be fleet? Is it okay to break up with someone using emojis? And sometimes we talk about butts. No, we don't. Nope. <laughs> Find out the answers to these important questions and many more on Still Buffering, a sister's guide to teens through the ages. I am a teenager. And, and I was two. Butts, 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 butts. No. <laughs> Baby, you change your mind.